Hello everyone. Thank you for joining on yet another exciting Friday celebrated as Author Day at House of Books and Tales. Today with us we have Paro Anand ma'am. Yes. A very warm welcome ma'am. Hi. Thank you to House of Books and Tales uh, for having this wonderful idea. We go for a library to think not outside the box but inside the box because what box the screen our laptops and phones that box so i'm paro anand and i write for children and i write for adults and my most favorite is to write for young adults young adults being anybody really from 12 13 till 100 would be a young adult depending on how you think right i i consider myself a young adult although the government thinks of me as a senior citizen now i'm i've been very happy being a writer um i've had a lot of challenges on the way i've also won the sahitya academy award and the very same book has been banned out of some schools because some grown ups thought it was in appropriate literature for children it's a strange thing so that's just a little bit about me before we dive in and learn some more now uh, we are excited to know about your childhood what was it like please share i can certainly tell you a very funny incident that happened i was in class 7 and our teacher was asking us about pets that we had at home and the funny thing is that i was a big animal expert i knew a lot about animals they fascinated me um when my turn came and everybody else seemed to have very interesting pets they had someone had twin rabbit someone had uh, you know talking parrot someone had this gigantic saint bernard dogs so when my turn came the whole class turned around and was looking at me and all i had at home was a very old dog who was more like a carpet than a dog he would just lie there and not move <laughs> with everybody's eyes looking at me instead of saying old dog what came out of my mouth was monkey i have a monkey they have a monkey of course but so the teacher called me to the front of the class and said paro tell us all about your monkey and like bakhan all kinds of rubbish things are making up about this monkey and questions are being shot at me i just think if Someone in your class suddenly said that they have a monkey. What question do you ask? So people would ask me what kind of monkey, and I said it's a capuchin monkey from South America, trying to be very exotic, right? Uh, is it a boy or girl? It's a girl. What's the what's her name? Her name is Mirchi. Uh, or at that time I said Pepper. Uh, Pepper the capuchin monkey. What does she eat? or oh, she we try to feed her very healthy fruit and nuts and everything but actually what she loves is powdered coffee she loves coffee and no. what does she want is she sleep everything about this monkey that people are shooting at me and i'm giving the answers so easily and in my head i'm thinking wow paro you're really good at this Excel and you discovered that you were a storyteller that young. Exactly. So in class 7 I think I realized because I wasn't very good at studies. I wasn't very good at anything much. But guess what? I was very good at telling lies. Thanks to Pep. But you know something interesting. I started out my career as a writer. telling lies well lies stories one and the same thing really but i've ended up daring to tell the truth daring to tell hard truths to young people because they already know they need to know 
and they need to sort of grapple with those realities. So what I've ended up writing more and more is reality fiction. Would you please tell us uh, about some of your favorite work? Uh, work that I've written, you know, it's very hard to say because when I'm writing a work, I'm inhabiting that universe. I'm in the skin of my character. If someone was to really look at the body of my work, you would see that it's very character driven because I have become that person. I'm not writing about this character or that person or that character. I am that person. They're not a character. They're not a make-believe person. It's me. So in that sense, they're my children. And parents can never say, which is your favorite child. If someone was to ask a parent, who's your favorite child? Of course, the parent would say, I don't have a favorite. Yeah, of course, sometimes you as a kid feel, uh, you know, my parents always favor the younger one or the older one or the boy or the girl or whatever. But heart of hearts, you know, parents don't have a favorite. Yes, some books do better than others. Some go on to become bestsellers. And some just quietly lie there. But a parent doesn't love either child less more because they were more successful. Wonderful. What inspired you? You know, what was your home like and what were the uh, surroundings like which that inspired you to be a writer? You know, I came from a family of readers. Um, every evening, without fail, we had an hour after homework was done and you had been out to play and my parents were back from work, four of us would sit together. Uh, we would play some soft classical music and we would sit and each one would be reading in their book. And guess what? I hated that time. I really hated it. To me, reading was a waste of time. I had no interest. I wanted to be talking about my day. As you see, I talk a lot. But um, in my home, there was an open shelf policy, which means basically, it wasn't as though these are books for children and these are books for adults and children are not supposed to go to the back shelf. We could pick up any book. And I started pulling off books from my parents' shelves or that, you know, the open shelves that were there. And I discovered the one book that just clicked and made me a reader. And that book was Born Free. Uh, Born Free is a book by a writer called, uh, a naturalist called Joy Adams. Uh, and it's about a lion cub that they adopt, she and her husband adopt. And the lioness's name is Elsa. And I just was completely transported that's what I wanted to do in life. And I couldn't become a naturalist because of various reasons. Um, I wanted, but I realized the more I read that through reading and through writing, I could be whatever I wanted to be, whenever I wanted to be it. I could write being that. And that was magical. There's no other profession I think that allows you that. Maybe acting, but even there, you are acting somebody else's dream. When you're writing, you're writing your own dreams. And it's really freeing, really empowering. Wow, so if you had to be a book title, what would that be? That's super easy for me. The book title that I would be is Born Free. One, because that's the book that changed my life. And secondly, because my parents had the trust in me, the faith in me to set me free. Um, they allowed me to be what I wanted to be. They allowed me to explore the world and allowed me to become a children's writer 
at a time when it really wasn't a valid profession. There were very few children's writers. And I, when I said, that's what I wanted to become, they said, go ahead, do it, yeah. Congratulations for that. You have uh, great parents and then, uh, you know, the, that is very important for a child. The trust and the confidence, if it is instilled at that point of time, it just carries on. So thank you so much for, if you know, you chose that and we get to read beautiful books. <laughs> thank you. Um, so, it's, also other, it's also the other way. It's also the other way that they gave me the freedom, but they also gave me the responsibility to take the consequences of my choices. So if my choices sometimes were wrong, and of course they were wrong, then I faced those consequences. I also had the courage in myself and in them to say, I made a mistake. It didn't go as I planned. How wonderful if we create that space for every child to grow. So, ma'am, uh, any five uh, places on your travel list? Um, as a writer, I could really travel anywhere. I work a lot with children in very difficult circumstances. And my wish is to travel, not necessarily, you know, one to three, four, these five places, but anywhere where I can make a difference in children's lives, especially children in difficult circumstances. And I have had the opportunity to work with children uh, in conflict zones, uh, children growing up in extreme poverty or children disability or tribal children homeless children, children of nomadic tribes. I have had that opportunity. And I think if I were to wish travel, that's what it would be, except one thing. I want to go somewhere where everything is taken care of. And all I have to do is sit and write. I want to escape to a writer's retreat. Wonderful. Would you please share the names of the book you just mentioned the stories about? So, my work with children in difficult circumstances, it actually works like this together because my work with them also informs my own writing. And I know that those stories need to be told to young people out there. So, I have this book called Like Smoke and this is the book that won the Sahitya Academy Award for Children's Literature. Um, it's about young people on the edge of crisis. I have a book called The Other, The Other, of how we tend to otherize people, how our circles are becoming tighter and tighter and tighter and we are not letting other people in. We want to only be within our comfort zone. That's called the other. This is called like smoke. And then there are these two books, No Guns at My Son's Funeral and Weed. These two books are very special. This one was actually the first book of its kind in the country. So much so that we weren't sure whether this was a book that would actually reach the hands of children. Look at the title, No Guns at My Son's Funeral. What a horrible title. In fact, we wondered if it was too horrible a title and we almost changed the title. But guess what? This book has become an international success. And this year, this is actually a, a new cover because this book is now 15 years old, still wow. very old. And it's, um, so we're celebrating a great milestone for a book. Uh, we, both of these books are based in Kashmir, young people growing up in conflict. Um, so that is one. And then 
this book, which I would love to do a little reading from at some point today, uh, is called Being Gandhi. And this one has an interesting story of how it came about. Wow, I'm so inquisitive about all the books that you know you mentioned uh, set up in Kashmir. How did they come up? I would love to hear that too, and about uh, being Gandhi. I was working on a very interesting project. You know, um, I was working in the government, heading the National Centre for Children's Literature. One of the things that I was doing was to go in with my team into the smallest villages in the country and setting up village libraries. So there was a kit of a hundred books. And these were children who had never seen a book. They'd never held a book. There were no libraries. There was no house of stories and tales for them. Um, a lot of these places were in Rajasthan actually. And I thought we were doing a great job setting, you know, giving these gift pack of a hundred books. But one night one girl came up to me and she said, I said, Kaho. She said, Dekhi, hum andhkar mein reh rahe the. Hum, hume pata hi nahi tha ki kitabon ki bhi ek dunya hai. हम बड़े खुश थे क्योंकि हमें पता ही नहीं था लेकिन अब हम ये नहीं सोचना कि हम वापस उस अंधकार में जाएंगे अब हम वहां पर खुश नहीं रह सकते आपने एक नई दुनिया दिखाई है ये सौ सौ किताबें तो हम बड़ी क्योंकि पतली पतली किताबें थी ये तो हम बड़ी जल्दी पढ़ लेंगे उसके बाद क्या वेरी वैलिड क्वेश्चन आई कुन स्लीप दैट टाइम and i early in the morning got together with my team i said what do we do we came up with the idea of a wall newspaper why because children are the biggest resource right they are the resource so um they have stories to tell and children in these villages dhanis you know it was more a collection of houses rather than a, even a village nobody was asking them their stories in fact those children hardly had a childhood at all so we went to the pradhan ji and asked him give us one wall from on any building or anything one wall and one whole dhoti on all sari or dhoti we took that and we stuck it onto that wall the children had papers and pen we asked them to write their stories the beauty was that about 20 25 children wrote their stories poems recipes interview jokes jokes for laughs whatever and pasted them onto that onto that dhoti and 20 25 children could read it at the same time um and when they finished reading it they could create more stories and so not only had we given them more reading material but we gave them a platform for them to express their views for them to be children this worked so well in rajasthan that then we started doing this in other places and i thought why don't we make this into a world record and so we approached actually we approached the uh, Guinness Book of Records but they have one very funny policy that um you cannot is a certain number of new categories that can be uh entered in a year and those number of new categories had already been filled so limka book of records did record it it's a world record for the world's longest newspaper over 3000 children contributed in 13 languages from 11 states in india and i'm a world record holder i'm very proud of it wow that is something people don't know about you <laughs> right our so, readers would love so so one of the things that we decided at that time was to go to those children who don't have the opportunity 
So one of the places we decided to go to, we joined up with the army and we went to Kashmir. And while we were there, the Kargil conflict burst up. And we were all stuck. The children couldn't go back. We could come back to Delhi. So what happened is that what I noticed in that interaction with these children, none of them were pro-violence. All those children wanted was peace. Just peace. In fact, no guns at my son's funeral ends with whatever else happens, let there be peace. And this was what a girl in that uh, place did, uh, uh, did say. But there was conflict and war all around them. And I also learned that there were a lot of very young boys who had been recruited by militants to do their dastardly deeds. And No Guns at My Son's Funeral is about a 12-year-old child who becomes a militant. And we, which is a follow-up work, is about the family of a, mil of a disappeared man. And we don't know where he's gone. I am short of words. It, beautiful books, ma'am. Beautiful stories. And the way, you know, the story behind the story is what fascinates me. Um, uh, share something about uh, being Gandhi as well. Yeah. I would, you know, of course, it was 150 years of Gandhi. And all publishers were doing something. Well, schools were doing something around it. So a publisher friend uh, from Harper Collins asked me, can you do a book on Gandhi? My first reaction was, no, I can't, I don't want to. Because I don't write non-fiction, I write fiction. And also because the way children are taught Gandhi is very dry, it's very boring, it's very textbooky. More than that, I think a greater injustice than that that we've done to Gandhi in the way we present him to young people is that we've made him a god. pilot, teacher, Never said, right? So, but Gandhi was not God. He was a man of tremendous belief. And not only belief, of feeling and of action. And why can't we inspire kids and ourselves, not only children, why, why do we put all that onus on young people, ourselves? Why can't we be Gandhi? We all have a better person inside. Sometimes you see something happening and you say, Bada bura hua. Karte nahi hai kuch. Wouldn't Gandhi have done something? Wouldn't he have stepped up? If some boy is troubling a girl and we say, there's one child being bullied. You see it. You know it's happening. You turn a blind eye. Don't be those blind monkeys and the deaf monkeys. Use your hands. Use your eyes. Use your ears. Use your power. Use your education. And be Gandhi. Find your inner Gandhi and be Gandhi. And the more I was reading on Gandhi, the more I realized we need Gandhi. We need more than one Gandhi. We need everyone to be Gandhi. If all of us were a little bit like Gandhi, the world would be a better place. And we all want our world to be a better place. Children are not given to inequality. They don't know hate. We teach hate. 
अलॉन्ग हम जब खाना परोसते हैं साथ साथ नफरत भी परोसते हैं स्कूल and i say i'm going to talk about gandhi what do children do what's their reaction is always over it but then when i start to read chapter 1 and this sort of thing how am i going to convince them read the book try it okay? so chapter 1 starts with my life sucks just sucks and the kids in the class when i'm reading this eh Upon Gandhi starts like that, and they start to listen. And it's about—I well, won't read too much of it. It's about a little boy, a young twelve, thirteen-year-old boy, who is, as many thirteen-year-olds, irritated with life. Thinks that you know his world is collapsing because there's a new pimple on his cheek, or because a girl who he likes doesn't like him back. These are the big problems, right? and he thinks as many of us do ki bahar jo ho raha hai jo riots ho rahe hain ya jo anyay ho rahe hain bahut buri baat hai but nothing to do with me i have to keep what can i it's the government's job it's the grown ups job not my job right and then what happens is that indira gandhi is assassinated so this is not a book about gandhi because gandhi was a long time ago i brought it up to 1984 which is when indira gandhi is assassinated um two little bits that i'm going to give you from two very small bits um so indira gandhi is assassinated and the anti sikh riots break out all over I feel as if I'm growing up every second, aging, like my life is in fast forward. The television volume has finally been turned down because the sounds of rioting were very disturbing. The embers are catching outside, and the flames are going out of control. It is then that the shouting seems to come closer. We all turn to see the to look at the TV to see if someone's turned it, turned the volume back up. But no, no one has. The sounds are not out of the box; they are outside our door. At first, the shouts are confusing, but pretty soon the words separate enough for us to make out what the crowd wants: blood, the mob. has come of blood my mother tries to push the sofa against the door and lock the door firmly she shouts at my father to help her move the sofa but he shakes his head he stands there and shakes his head and says it's not for us and like a jigsaw everything falls in place the mom has not come for us but for sarab uncle because he is sick for my friends they're just children but the mom has come for them and i'm going to just skip ahead a little i have these bumps i was born in 84 one month after so i have you know oh My parents so tell me stories about it. Sure. If I can read just a very, very tiny bit more. We need Mahatma Gandhi right now. How I wish we could bring him back somehow. 
but I can't. And I think, what if Gandhi were not a Mahatma, but a 13-year-old boy? And this was going on outside. What would he do? What would he do? And then a strange thought comes over me. At least it's a very strange thought for me. It shakes me. I sit up a bit straighter. Can I? Can little, old, stupid, little me? Can I be Gandhi? Beautiful, beautiful. And he does. It steps to make the world a better place. So, what are your upcoming books? I have a book which should be coming out any day now. Uh, it's called No Man's Land. No Man's Land. Now, no man's have no land. So, what do displaced people call their people? That is a novel that's coming, told from two perspectives. One, a Kashmiri Pandit girl whose family has been driven out. And one, I made up a tribe of displaced people. So I made up a language and I made up their costumes and their culture and their rituals and everything. Uh, so No Man's Land coming any day now. I also have a book because I have just become a Dadi. So I've written a book for my grandsons called Sometimes a Babe. And that should be coming out any day now as well. Is uh, that a picture book? Uh, sometimes a baby is a picture book, yes. If books are your best friend, what is library to you? A library in my growing up years was not a happy place. Uh, it was a place where we were sent when we were punished or when we had detention. So my association with the library was never one of a best friend. Uh, the same as my children when I started taking them to a public library. And they said, is the librarian a witch? Because she was really like that, screaming at the children all the time. Sort of protecting books from children. But I've seen such amazing libraries and to me, a library is now a, a refuge where I can lose myself and travel. And um, just one more note for everybody who has been intrigued by some of the books that I've talked about. House of Books and Tales does have these books. And I know some of them are already in circulation. I'm very happy to know that. Do read these books of mine and ask me more questions. I'm always happy to answer questions by young readers. So go to House of Books and Tales and enjoy the travels around the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. We wish you best for the upcoming projects. And uh, we hope to catch up soon with more books, more stories. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andre. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs>